Don't do it yet. Oh no, that not that one. <laughs> that was this. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get canceled. kind of hygiene stuff I use for shampoo. I use the Biolage Hydrosource. It's a little bit expensive. It's maybe like $30 a bottle, but it literally lasts me forever. I don't use conditioner. I know that's kind of like a no-no, but I just don't. <laughs> and then to wash my body, I have Dove for sensitive skin. And that's all I use in the shower. And I always have an audience. Back in on that. So I figured that I would share with you my breakfast. It's really random and not really aesthetically pleasing and I already ate half of it. But of course I'm having my Starbucks cold brew, unsweetened coconut milk in it, morning staple. I'm having the leftover serving of Peruvian chicken from Green Chef. This video is not sponsored by Green Chef. I just actually use them <laughs> um, and I've been using them a lot more since I moved out on my own and also these wooden spoons game changer I love eating stuff off of wooden spoons I don't know why I'll link them in the description if you're interested but and I got my seltzer water of course and then because it's going bad in my fridge I'm eating the rest of this watermelon with some tahini on it so you know kind of very much a very random breakfast but it's what I'm eating so I'm showing you. I've been having a really good week this week. This week was kind of chaotic because my regular job we were really busy. If you guys don't know I'm a graphic designer and I work for a place that you would never expect a graphic designer to work. I can't really tell you what that place is. <laughs> I've like literally signed NDAs but I haven't read them so I don't know what I can I can't say. So the best thing to do in that situation is to not say anything at all. But anyway, so this week entailed a lot of going into the office early, a lot of running around, doing stuff really quickly to meet like deadlines and stuff. And that type of situation is always a perfect storm for me to feel at the end of a day to decompress, to just like straight up binge because it's like, ah, oh, you did it. You got through the day, treat yourself. But I managed to not to. Like I would have things that were not technically the healthiest, but I only had a portion of it. I didn't have a whole full out smorgasbord. Another thing I did is I got like this huge vegetable tray from the grocery store. So when I would have my meals, I'd also have that out and then like these bowls of fruit. I also had a cantaloupe bowl. So it felt like a smorgasbord and you know, I could have as much of the vegetables as I want to give me like that cool feeling, but it wouldn't be that detrimental. Another thing I've been doing also, as I've kind of mentioned, was like the Green Chef thing. I've been ordering from them a lot more. And yeah, just knowing that I have like meals already in my fridge to choose from and I know they're all gonna be delicious and I know they're gonna take like 20 to 30 minutes to make and I know I'm gonna feel pride after I'm done making the meal because I'm like, oh, I made this and look, it looks really professional. I've also been taking Doug for like a lot of walks. He's doing a lot better since I got him a harness. One of the best things that I think that I've been working on with him is when we're on a walk and I stop, training him to sit down right away. This morning's walk came in particularly helpful because my pants kept falling down. So when I stopped, he would sit down and I would yank up my pants so my B cheeks weren't out and about, which is important when you're going to a public park where children might be present. Yeah, so I've been feeling more in control lately and more, I guess just good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like I definitely have my days where I'm like, uh, this sucks, but largely I feel like I have some control or like that I'm getting better or I'm building the tools to get better. So in my therapy session, a couple of days ago, I was telling my therapist how like I'm doing so good. I was telling her all these tactics I was using to lessen the binge. And then so I asked her, do you think that it would be okay to start tracking calories again? Because I haven't been doing that like at all. I've been just focusing on not 
eating to the point where I feel like I'm going to physically burst. And I asked her, would it be okay to like weigh myself again or anything like that? Measure, take pictures, like before and after pictures. She was just like flat out, honestly, no, I don't think you should do that. She basically just described intuitive eating where you're not thinking about food, you're not obsessing about calories or tracking or whatever else. And you just kind of like live and sometimes you do a little bit worse one day and sometimes you do a little bit better. And you know, it's not like something you think about, but like maybe you think about it in terms of like, okay, I know that this is nutritious for me. And she was like, it sounds like your week this week has been pretty balanced. And what you're used to is these extremes. Cause definitely it's like, I'm either doing like super good, like the best I've ever done. I don't slip up at all, or I'm completely binging and in that cycle. And so it looks a lot like this. And she's like, what we need you to go to is kind of like this, you know, rolling with the homies. And she suggested that I fulfill that urge to go to extremes in a different way. And she said like bungee jumping and I was like, well, we'll never, <laughs> I will never do that. But I get what she's saying. I'm used to these extremes. So it's like natural for me to want to like kind of get back into them, but that's how I stay in that cycle. So I guess that that notion kind of just puts me in a place where I'm in uncharted territory now. You know, I've always gone about like getting healthier in the way of data and tracking and whatever else. Like I'm not super obsessed with like calories or hitting a specific number, but I know that when I follow those kinds of things, I see results. And when I don't track or whatever I don't really see results and don't get me wrong I'm still gonna be trying to shed some weight not really for aesthetic reasons I was kind of telling my therapist about this too I was like I don't really care how my body looks like yeah I notice things about it and I don't really like when my arms are flappy or whatever else but I don't feel embarrassed about that to other people I don't really feel ashamed about it I still like live my life or whatever and I don't really think that she believed me <laughs> but it's true like I just don't really care about my body. A lot of the times, actually, I don't really feel very connected to my body at all. I feel like my mind and my body are separate. I feel like whatever I actually am is like on the inside. I know that sounds corny, but it's not like all, what really matters is within, you know what I mean? It's more like I feel separate from my body. And I was explaining this to my therapist and she said that that is actually pretty common with people who have eating disorders. But I don't really care how I look. I think it's more about comfort to me. I don't like sitting down and then all of a sudden the waistband on my pants is tighter and like and digging into my stomach. I don't really like laying down and then the roll bubbling up on the side. So it's like stacked like a snowman and then it gets sweaty. I think I would just feel more comfortable at a lower weight. So I'm definitely still gonna try to work toward that without counting calories and not focusing solely on being absolutely perfect all the time and realizing like you can eat a shitty meal every once in a while and still stay on track. But yeah, so that's the therapy kiki for today, for this week, the realizations of the week. And also I just wanna say, I'm in no way, shape or form trying to give other people advice on eating disorders. Like bitch, I do not know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure even if I went to school years and years and years, got like a doctorate, got like certifications, was top in my field for eating disorders and dietary needs and everything like that, I would never put out generalized information like, oh, you should be doing this. I would never do that because I totally think it's like a whole individual type thing. I think my situation is going to be different than the next person. Binging in general, like people do it for a lot of different reasons and I would never feel comfortable being like, <laughs> hey, this is what you should be eating. This is what you should be doing. And that's what I've been doing with my whole weight loss journey too, is like, it's been about me. Like I've never been like, everyone should be doing this. So yeah, when I talk about therapy and stuff, like if something resonates with you, great. But I also think what I'm doing may not be for everyone. And you know, I'm just documenting my own story. I'm never trying to impose that on anyone else. And that has been the disclaimer for this video. with me when I part my hair down the middle with this haircut 
Do I look like Professor Snape? Mr. Potter. I asked my mom that and she just laughed for a really long time and then said no, but the fact that she laughed for a really long time before saying no made me feel like it was actually yes. That's the least of my worries, whether or not I look like Snape or not. What I'm very concerned about, probably more than anything, is the fact that my house is infested with murder hornets. We have to be very quiet, because I think they might be out and about. Oh, there's one. Murder hornet. Oh my god. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on, Douglas. Come in, there's murder hornets out there. Murder hornets, come on. Dad, come on. Dad, come. He still doesn't listen to his name and he doesn't even realize that there's murder hornets flying all around his head. But they're building nests all up in these like rafter things. I counted 13. I'm trying to go out there and actually show you the nests, but there's one that's just slapping around out there. But yeah, so there's like a million. I don't know what to do about that wasp spray welcome to this portion of the video where i'm going to be eating a justin's peanut butter cup and putting together a hula hoop phase one complete okay douglas put it together i bought this monstrosity months ago I'll have to look it up on Amazon when I bought it because it was definitely way before that trend that everyone's doing on TikTok where they like try weighted hula hoop for a week. Don't want to be one of those people that say they liked it before it was cool, but... Douglas, <laughs> why are you staring so creepy? It may cause bruises in the first two weeks. And that's no lie. Do you remember those circuit workout places that they had? There was this place that me and my mom used to go to. It was called Ladies Workout Express, and it was like a knockoff of curbs. And the whole concept behind those kind of places was that you do like a circuit workout. There's like a machines arranged in a circle and every like 30 seconds or 45 seconds you would switch machines and you'd go around like once or twice depending on how long you wanted to work out. But in the middle, you ended by going in the middle and doing a weighted hula hoop in front of all the other ladies. And this was just like a torture device. I don't know why I thought it was so fun, but it literally would bruise around your middle when you like first started doing it. But yeah, so I wanted one of these again. I want it. I got it. Ariana Grande would be proud, except for it took me literally probably like six months to actually put it together and use it. This is janky. We did it. Ow, ow. Okay. Should we try her out? Okay, you could be the guardian of the box. Go there. set you right here and the mailman's coming up so we're just gonna pretend like we don't see them go lay down i don't want you to get hit good boy ow <laughs> okay okay the pants over the belly helps the pain. Oh my god! <sighs> Nothing to see here! Nothing to see here! I would like to get to the point where I could like watch an episode of Bob's Burgers and do this, but I don't know if it's gonna get to that point. It's very painful. Oh, this is nice. I was trying to decide if I wanted to like make a gym in my house. <gasps> oh my God, my lasagna. So like I was saying, I 
have been going back and forth whether or not I want to make a home gym in my house or if I want to just get a gym membership. I make these pros and cons lists all the time and I keep just going back and forth and then never doing anything. Because on one hand, it would be nice to have like a full setup here. Roll out of bed, go to the home gym. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, would I actually do that? And also, I would probably have access to a lot more equipment and I wouldn't have to do any maintenance on the equipment if I just joined a gym. And maybe the gym I choose could, would have a sauna. That would be awesome. But also with that is like the social anxiety thing. But also, also, that might be a good way to combat that a little bit, you know, some immersion therapy. Especially because like I've gotten so weird since COVID and just not socializing at all. Like I make inappropriately long eye contact with people. That's something that's new. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'll mull it over some more. Welcome to me in a bubble bath. I'm just leisuring. One of the major pluses of this house was that there was a whole ass soaking tub. I don't know if you've ever been a big bitch in the standard tub, but it's not really fun. Your titties and your belly are floating above the water like Waikiki, the big island, the small island, they're all there. I obviously don't know the geography of Hawaii because I'm uncultured, but islands, bitch, no one. Sorry, I'm feeling sassy. I thought it was too big for the bathtub, but I was just a big fish in a small pond, if you will. Now I'm a big bitch in a big bathtub and I feel good. And we got the bubbles going. Gonna get a yeast infection. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've never gotten a yeast infection from a bubble bath. I have been the lucky one. I have been blessed. Hashtag blessed. What are we going on about, squad? Anyways, for the rest of the day today, I have been landscaping the front yard, planting a little flower bed. We got three pink peonies on deck, some black mulch, sophisticated. And here's proof, my crusty ass nails, that I was out there working my fingers to the nubbins. Not really, it's a really small flower bed, but it took me all day. <laughs> um, anyways, I made the executive decision to not to show the world the front of my house, trying to be smart, trying not to get sex trafficked, which, oh my God, I listened to a podcast about that the other day and it's a problem that needs to be stopped. And I don't know if it is a problem that can be stopped because the people who are doing it are the people who, who have the most money in the world. And oh my God, how do we stop those people? Corruption, the wormhole is deep. It's one of those issues that make you feel so helpless. Okay, let's talk about something less depressing. But that's the problem. That's the problem with it. It's so depressing that everyone wants to talk about something else. What was I saying? <laughs> I made the executive decision to not show you guys the front of my house, but like 99% of you are cool. 99% of you, I would have a kiki. We would go every Wednesday to brunch. We would wear fancy floppy hats. We would form a cult. Um, the other like one, one of you, has sent me inappropriate message about my stumpy toes on Instagram and made me feel uncomfortable. So I don't want that person to know where I live. <laughs> but yeah, so sorry you couldn't see that. Imagine like, going from trash to class, but also like class and I still haven't cut my lawn. So like there's like patches of like long grass in some places, like classy with a bunch of grass. Imagine that and that's what my yard looks like. So I've been contemplating a rebrand on this channel because of the fact that like I'm not going to be weighing myself and this channel's kind of you know like in my bio in the description it says like weight loss and it's not really about that it's like evolved like it's still going to be like a health journey but it's not really you know what I mean like you're not seeing you're not seeing me weigh in. I'm not actively trying to lose weight right now. I'm just trying to get in a healthy mindset and then eventually focus on that. Um, and the fact that my therapist is like, don't do it. Don't do it yet. Oh no, that, not that one. <laughs> that mustache. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get canceled. But I'm, but I'm more ready to get into like this renaissance period of my life where I'm trying a bunch of things. I'm finding actual joy in things. Um, I'm cultivating my interests and just kind of following them down a rabbit hole. 
But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and listening to my bathtub rambling. 